Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! MPs have published a damning report into the collapse of the construction and services company Carillion. They said senior executives had presided over a rotten corporate culture and they accused them of greed and recklessness. They also called for a potential breakup of the big four audit firms after they waved through the company's accounts. Simon Gompertz reports. Birmingham's new super hospital, construction at a standstill. This is the continuing blight from Carillion, which today's report says was a giant and unsustainable time bomb, condemned by a rotten corporate culture and led by directors too busy stuffing their mouths with gold. The longer this lies abandoned, the more the weather gets in, the higher the cost of restarting. It could be delayed by three years. It was heartbreaking more than anything because I had to tell guys that they had to go home that day. James was a subcontractor at the hospital who lost £200,000 to Carillion. Seeing the report, he fears for the industry he works in. It's very upsetting to think that this actually goes on um, and it's probably still going on. Um, and it, in other companies? In other companies, which is obviously going to make us very wary and is going to make other companies very wary of working for bigger companies in the future. Blamed by MPs for what happened to James and others, Richard Howson, the chief executive with a strategy described as doomed to fail. Finance director Richard Adam called the architect of aggressive accounting policies an accusation he rejects. And chairman Philip Green said to be delusional, which he says is inaccurate. They had more concerns for their own pay, bonuses and dividend payouts than they did for uh, running the uh, company uh, in a way that would generate jobs and investment and, and growth. The MPs are scathing about the auditors. KPMG, which signed off the accounts, was complicit and complacent. Deloitte didn't identify terminal failings. EY was paid millions for failed turnaround advice, criticisms they all reject. The standstill at this hospital project, the layoffs, the losses for suppliers, they've prompted MPs to demand tougher regulation and a look at breaking up the big four auditing firms, what they call a cosy club. It was very uh, shocking. Jay, who's 17, lost his apprenticeship in Birmingham when Carillion went under. We're always going to be thinking now, is this going to ever happen to us again? Are we just going to be completely left out to hang in the dry again? Um, so yeah, it's worrying for all of us, um, not just us apprentices, but you know, the lads who are working on site as well. Jay City is left without its new hospital, maybe for years. There's now a challenge to build safeguards so people like him can work with confidence in the industries where Carillion is history. Simon Gompertz, BBC News, Birmingham. Now, a firm which was reckless in the pursuit of growth and a board either negligently ignorant of its own company's rotten culture or complicit in it. And that's just a couple of the scathing conclusions from MPs on the massive collapsed concentra construction company Carillion, which went bust in January with more than a billion pounds in debt and the loss of many thousands of jobs. The report also takes aim at the accountants who signed off on the firm's books despite the spiralling debts. Here's our business editor, Siobhan Kennedy. They were at the heart of one of the biggest corporate collapses the country has ever seen. Richard Howson, the chief executive, with misguided self-assurance. Richard Adam, the finance director and architect of Carillion's accounting tricks. And Philip Green, the delusional chairman, both responsible and culpable. The three Carillion bosses, who today's report said created a giant and unsustainable corporate time bomb, which in January spectacularly exploded. The only competency of this board of directors was to stuff their own mouths with gold. On every other function, they failed. It had been one of Britain's biggest construction firms with a vast swathe of public contracts from hospitals to motorways. But in the end, Carillion buckled under one and a half billion pounds of debt and a pension deficit worth 2.7 billion. Today's report scathing on every front and leaving the company and its directors open to potential criminal and civil proceedings. 
at best, the directors of the firm were naive and uh, delusional and, and at worst, uh, uh, cooking the books. The collapse of Carillion is a classic case of corporate greed, over-aggressive expansion, contracts won at any cost, and even when the debts became unsustainable, the accounts were signed off regardless, and the reckless pursuit of growth continued, the MPs said, with scant regard for employees, pensioners and suppliers, like this one. No, I'm not, I'm not happy at all because we... Andy Bradley know, uh, runs Floratech, a landscaping firm landscaping which depended on Carillion contracts for a third of its business. Schools, when Carillion went bust, prisons, he was owed more than £500,000. We've had to borrow more money to cover that. Our bank account is half a million pounds less than it should be and we've had to lay staff off. That's, that's the position that we were in. The MPs accused Carillion of using suppliers like a credit card, forcing them to go to banks for payment, which increased Carillion's debt, but that debt was hidden away on the balance sheet. More than £800 million of it discovered when the firm went bust. Clearly, the senior leadership team of that business were not fit for purpose. Such aggressive counting policies were intended to deceive lenders and investors, the report concluded, by giving a falsely rosy picture of Carillion's finances. And who was responsible for those policies? Well, the MPs are clear. Certainly the uh, accountancy techniques that uh, Carillion uh, used, uh, the blame for that should be laid at the door, uh, I believe, of Richard Adam. So we went to the former finance director's door today in Hertfordshire. As you can see, Mr Adam is either not here or he's not answering his door. But what's particularly galling for MPs is the fact that Mr Adam left Carillion at the end of 2016 and then cashed in three quarters of a million pounds worth of his shares, knowing full well, they say, that the company was failing. Despite that, since then, neither he nor any of his fellow directors have handed back a single penny of their bonuses and even changed the rules to make it harder for that money to be returned. In a statement, Mr Adams said he rejected the unwarranted conclusions the committees had reached concerning his role. And there were harsh words for KPMG, Carillion's auditor of 19 years, whom MPs claimed was complicit in its practices, while the accounting regulator, the Financial Reporting Council, was wholly ineffective. KPMG said, we believe we conducted our audit appropriately. The FRC said it was a strong, transparent regulator. But the biggest criticism was laid at the feet of the three key men and a board that MPs said was either negligently ignorant of the rotten culture at Carillion or complicit in it. Mr Howson, will you give your bonuses back? No. Richard Howson declined to comment today, while the chairman, Philip Green, said the board always sought to make decisions on the best available information and strive to act in the interests of all stakeholders. That's not how Mr Bradley feels. They should hang their heads in shame, in, in my eyes, because a lot of people have lost their jobs and lost their businesses because of their actions. If, if it's been found that they are culpable or there's been malpractice, then they, the, the law should deal with that, quite frankly. But, but really, they should be ashamed of themselves. They've taken a very good business and, and destroyed it. Siobhan Kennedy reporting. And there was more political embarrassment over private contractors doing work on behalf of the government with the report into the collapse back in January of the Carillion building firm. It went under taking thousands of jobs with it. A report by MPs today shared the blame around. It castigated the directors for their greed, the government for giving more work to a company in trouble and Carillion's accountants. They didn't make the company spell out what was really going on with its finances. When Carillion went under, it took other companies with it. This decorating firm managed to stay afloat by laying off staff. It's one of 30,000 suppliers Carillion owes money to. It turned out to be nearer to 150,000. Uh, we know we're not going to get that back. And um, so we've now had to reorganise the business to work around that. Carillion's directors told MPs the company was well run and got into trouble when several clients didn't pay bills on time. But MPs blamed them for Carillion's failure.
Three directors are singled out. MPs accuse Richard Howson of misguided self-assurance. He was, they say, part of the problem. They conclude Carillion's former finance director used accounting tricks to paint a rosy picture of the company and got out before it went under. And they judge that Carillion's chairman, Philip Green, was delusional in his upbeat assessment of the company's prospects until the very end. All three men insist they acted properly. The directors of the company were pursuing a policy of reckless corporate greed and they were prioritising uh, paying big bonuses to themselves, um, increasing the dividends at a time when the pension fund was going increasingly into uh, deficit. Do you not accept they did all they could to no. save this no, business and they didn't realise how bad the situation really was? The board went up to it. They were busy um, stuffing their mouths with gold, as Rachel has said. Uh, they had very little concern about their workforce, which was very extensive, or the contracts they promised to deliver on, or their pensioners. When Carillion went into liquidation, construction sites fell silent. MPs say responsibility for the company's demise extends beyond the boardroom. Carillion's annual report and accounts were published last March. They show the company in good health and were signed off by the independent auditor KPMG. But just Four months later and everything began to go spectacularly wrong. MPs accuse KPMG of complacency. They believe the auditor should have spotted trouble ahead. KPMG says it acted appropriately, but MPs believe the big four accounting firms wield too much power and there's a case for breaking them up. I think there is an issue. Um, the issue is with choice because at the top end of the market only to have a choice of four organisations uh, I don't think is, is good uh, and our solution to that would be you need to encourage more entrance into the market. Carillion was a private company delivering public services. The construction of this hospital in Birmingham stopped in January. It's still not clear when it will be built, by whom or at what extra cost. So will its directors face any consequences now? Well, look, it's obvious the board of Corelli and Nina didn't know enough about what was going on at the company that they were running, and the MP's report is savage in the language it uses and pretty unforgiving. The directors clearly made a mess of things, but were they dishonest? That is the question, and MPs say that is for the insolvency service, ultimately to decide. The insolvency service is looking at the conduct of Carillion directors, so watch this space. They have the power to disqualify if they deem it uh, to be appropriate. But look, let's be clear, the MPs also feel that the failure was not just in the boardroom. It was systemic. Non-execs on the board were asleep to the problems at Carillion. So too were the auditors and the regulators in MPs' verdict worse than useless. And what about the big four accountancy firms? Should they be worried about the impact on them? Well, look, auditors are supposed to be professionally sceptical, aren't they? They're the accountants that come in, that kick the tyres, lift the bonnet, check the numbers, and they're paid to ask difficult questions about the way businesses are being run. It's clear that MPs were astonished that KPMG had audited Carillion's accounts for 19 years and had never raised any red flags or warnings about what was going on there. And look at the speed with which the business suddenly unfolded. Unraveled. But again, they think there's a bigger problem. The four auditors, KPMG, EY, PWC, Deloitte, MPs feel they've cornered the market and it's in the public interest that looking at breaking up uh, that cartel as they will, stranglehold as they see it, in the public interest. Now, this issue has been looked at before. The Competition and Markets Authority dismissed it a few years ago. But the CMA has a new chairman, a man called Andrew Tyree, and he's made it clear previously he thinks there is a problem in the auditing market. Joel, Joel Hills, thank you.